Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I'm feeling all inspired and motivated right now. One, the sun is shining today. I just got in from doing a bunch of seed starting, so I kind of like, I'm okay here. I pretty yeah. much look the same all the time. But anyway, <laughs> but we just got back from the Northwest Flower and Garden Festival in Seattle yesterday afternoon. It was a whirlwind of a trip. We were only there for two evenings. There's one funkus snap. Do you see it? Uh-uh. It's like... <laughs> Why are they always like right in front of your face? I don't know. You don't see them flying around unless no. it's right in front of your face. I have those little sticky traps out too, and ever since I did the whole like scraping the top layer of soil, mosquito bits, sand... Like there's maybe one fungus gnat on all of the sticky traps, but that one that's still in here is going to find me. Yeah. I swear. Anyway, we were only there for two nights, one full day, but they let us into the show early one day before they opened. And it was really nice because they had the lights up. And I actually, I think you can see the displays a little bit better yeah. on camera. Sure. In person, it's magical when the lights are dimmed and you can see all the landscape lighting kind of highlighting things in the garden uh, but it was you know people put in a tremendous amount of effort on those spaces yeah. it's fun to see all the different styles and see all the plants of course because all those plants have been forced to look beautiful uh, this time of year when they're not out in our gardens the meet and greet went really well too i was surprised yes. by the amount of people that came thank you to all of you guys who came out and waited three hours some of you to yeah. get to the front of the line like we did not expect that at all especially because we've never done just a meet and greet it's always connected to some kind of a presentation yeah oh, the worst do you still not want to do presentations never i will <laughs> just say no yeah. like i don't know i mean well okay there's everybody has a number though have you ever done that like you know like what like how much would they have dollars? to offer you yeah if somebody was like here's one million dollars would you say yes well of course I, yeah of course yeah. you would say yes, yes. yeah i'm not but then, dumb. like five hundred thousand dollars you'd still yes. say yeah I feel like you can start to get that number where it's like, you know, $20,000. Probably still yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody has a number. I suppose. But anyway, we've never done it connected to another like event. Mm -hmm. um, so we just thought, oh, we'll just have a few of you guys show up and that would be awesome. And we could really spend time chatting with you. And when I looked at that line, in fact, when we got to the area where we were supposed to be, um, a few of you guys stopped me and we were able to chat and I thought, well, this is it. Cause I couldn't see, it was like the line had formed on a different end of the area, but that was blocked from me. And I'd kind of scanned it though. And I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, this yeah. is perfect. And then I got around the display and I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I couldn't even see the end of it. It went around anyway. It was a really fun time. And I was able to chat with each one of you for at least a few minutes. So anyway, thank you to those of you who came out. Also, today's recap is sponsored by Farmer's Friend, which I will get into here in just a minute. Let's jump right into last week's videos. The first one was Garden Inspiration Part 5 with my mom. So she came over, we made a cocktail, we sat in the Hartley, and we looked at beautiful gardens. That's the, like the perfect... <laughs> The yeah. perfect afternoon. Uh, Tart Christine said, I loved seeing your mom and you in this video reviewing gardens. You should do this more often. Question is the first garden, uh, 58 seconds in video, a container only garden. It appears that way from a lot of different angles. I can't tell you po like for positive if it is, but it sure does look like it. Erica said, can you do a video on different types and suggestions of filler flowers for cut flower bouquets? Yes. Also a bouquets builder how-to video would be amazing using cut flowers you've grown. Yes. We've done several videos of putting together arrangements. We didn't do so much of it last year. I just wasn't in the mood. Isn't that weird? Yeah. You go through seasons where like the season before I was like in, wanting to do flower arrangements all the time. And last year was just a nuts year. Well, <laughs> it it's interesting, just... you know, for you, I think that uh, just the growing things is is your passion and you don't have to cut it for arrangements to still be happy and oh, for yeah. it to bring you joy. It makes me every bit as happy just to see it sitting out there and yeah. just to go out and walk in it with the kids. I mean, um, you plant annual containers and you never cut the flowers off of those. Right. You know, you would just enjoy them for the, the look mm -hmm. that they provide. Yeah. So it makes sense to me that you don't need to you know, cut, cut flowers. Yeah. But I think it would them. be a good thing to, it's always a good thing to maybe even readdress every year. What are some, what are some fillers just like off the top of your head? Filler flowers? Yeah. Oh, white finch orlea, um, status, any bachelor's buttons, uh, pin cushion flowers. Um, what are other mignonette is a good one. Fever few is awesome. There's just to name a few. I mean, I could put together a video on that. Yeah. That's I think a that's good a great idea. idea. Yeah. Susan said, loved having Monica's input. What about a segment or Monica, did I say Monica? <laughs> I was reading the next line. Sorry. It says loved having mom's input. Me too. 
How about a segment with dad and Monica? We're actually going to do an interview with my dad here, maybe this next week. Oh. Possibly. So we'll put out a little video asking you guys for questions that you might have for him. Um, and it's just going to be a sit down with my dad. and That'll be fun. Yeah, that will be fun. And I think it's a great idea to have Monica involved in one of the garden yeah. inspirations. She'd probably love that. Uh, Blake said, I found myself leaning toward the same color palette as you and your mom. Reds just throw it off. They do. <laughs> I mean, you kind of just like go with one color palette and it's, it is kind of hard to blend sometimes. Uh, will you be showing the redo of your mom's veggie garden? We'll be showing parts of it because I think we'll be involved in parts of it hmm. um, in little ways. So yeah, it's a pretty major overhaul because they're having a, an addition put on their house um, kind of up in that upper yard. So it's going to change how you see the vegetable garden. Um, and it just, it was time for a redo. The raised beds were falling apart. Uh, and they want stuff that's a little bit taller. So I think that would be kind of fun to show. And I, I helped my mom with her design layout, like sketching it out. We kind of just talked through some things. She helps me with a lot of mine too. We, you know, it's better just to like, I don't know, have different perspectives on things. Yeah. So anyway, yes, we will capture part of it. Roland said, I'm wondering if you could update upload the recap videos as podcasts to places such as Spotify or Apple podcasts. I would love to listen to them while on the go, which I can't really do on YouTube. That's an interesting idea. I, you know, we've talked about it before, um, or at least I've thought about it before. I don't really know how to do that. I guess you just create an account and just upload the audio file. Yeah. I wonder how like, wah, wah, it yeah, would be with that because we rely so much on B-roll and pictures and things like that. Right. Maybe it'd be fine. I don't know. But maybe people just like to, like I can see how people would also find your voice kind of like comforting because they oh. like the channel and just want to keep like listening to you because that's they don't really have the time to actually watch because I, I do get that like when I'm mowing the lawn it takes me a couple hours to mow and like you don't have you can't watch something when right. you're mowing but yeah. you can listen to something and yeah. even though it's not as good it's still you know worth it versus not having it at all oh really yeah oh so, I just like take in the sun well it's not silent when you're doing the the lawn but yeah well it's it's noisy so you kind of you have to wear ear protection right. so you might as well be listening to something that's true uh, the Mercantile DIY said, I so enjoy your mom visiting with you in videos. I question, would it be possible to highlight a plant or a tree when you are mentioning the name of it? Like maybe a circle or an arrow. Oh, that would be so much work. Ken, do you want to start zooming in on things? <laughs> it's already like the I, hardest video to I edit. I have thought about that though. It would be helpful. I yeah. mean, I get why, you know, people would want that for sure. Yeah, it is a good idea. And you know what? We might be able to do it because... Um, since those videos are going to be moving to the highlights, we... We can spend more time We them. We can spend more time. We're going to hopefully get another editor to help with just those videos. And maybe they can spend a little extra time doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Mealsinator said, oh, the last garden with the blue colors really shown to me. I really uh, love a space where I have blue as center stage. What is the name of the grasses that have a blue to hue to it? Um, blue fescue. Ugh. <laughs> <Blue. laughs> I love it, Aaron. You know what? The, here's what it, it is. Here they have like a like a... Uh, it's like a gray, you know, look to them. Yeah. And there, it's kind of like a brownish gray. It's not like a vibrant blue. I do like vibrant blue. Yeah. And I think if we were in like a cooler zone, I probably would like it more. It's just here. It's kind of like what, being in Seattle. Like some of the pines that we saw in the mm -hmm. display gardens, they're just like this vibrant green. Here, you know, you've said that pines can have kind of like a dry look here. Mm -hmm. And they do. They can have a brownish dry look. Yeah. So I think it just depends on where... You know, where, where, you're at. where they're at. Ashley said, can someone help me with how to submit photos and videos for these? I think I heard it, there's a link somewhere, but I'm struggling to find it. Uh, it should be in the description below the video or like um, on Facebook, do you put the link right below the title? Like you have to expand the title. Yeah. You might have to click see more Yeah. or, you know, like there's three dots or you just mm -hmm. have to like kind of search around, but it's, it's there. Yeah. Rachel said, can you two do a video on gold plants or maybe on the color scheme you mentioned in the beginning, red, blue, green, and gold? I think that'd be a fun idea, just like theming it. All of our plants in late summer. <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit negative, Erin. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, like, doesn't it feel like in our area, everything kind of takes on a little bit of like a, a gold. Yeah. <laughs> hue. Yeah, lack of iron hue. Well, maybe. Not in our garden, though, because no. you take care of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Boom. All right, guys, like I said, today's video is sponsored by Farmer's Friend, who specializes in caterpillar tunnels slash cold frames slash, I used to call them greenhouses. 
Slash high tunnels. Right, it's high tunnels. They're not technically heated structures, they're season extenders. They have a whole bunch of different sizes. We ordered two last spring and we just did not get around to setting them up. Yeah. So we are hopefully gonna get them set up this spring. We got the 50 foot long by- We got two 50 footers, but you can get them. They actually have a new one that's a 25 foot long. Oh, nice. Um, which would fit, you know. A lot of space, yeah, and like yeah. 14 feet wide. I think they mm -hmm. all differ depending on your needs. And they've got like, you can, tie them off on the ends and close them up if you need to, to really trap heat. In the summer for us, they really provide uh, some extra protection from the wind. We can toss shade cloth over the top of it, like 30% or 50% mm -hmm. shade cloth. Um, so we can grow certain crops that need to be sheltered a bit. I'm actually consider growing our tomatoes in one this year because they just didn't hold up to our severe heat that we had last year. Um, anyway, it just enables you to do a lot more with your space for a lot longer in the season. The other thing, and I've said this before, their website is a pleasure to use. That was the reason I bought one like three years ago. Yeah, we got our first, first one. one. Mm -hmm. Because it was the only website that just made sense and you were confident that you were getting everything you needed. Mm -hmm. They also have web, um, videos on their YouTube, which is another reason that I made the purchase three years ago. They're nice videos too. Yeah, they're really well yeah. produced and they just give you the confidence that like, oh, anybody can set this up. You don't need to be handy. You don't need to be like a DIY type of person. You don't need to set the, the, I don't know what they call them, but the posts in concrete. Like yeah, it's you not can this... if you want to, like if, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to do that for extra support, you certainly can, but otherwise you can just drive um, rebar stakes into mm -hmm. the ground. So yeah, if any of you guys have been kind of interested in learning more about high tunnels or you've been wanting to purchase one, I would definitely check out their website to learn more. We will have a link down below and thank you farmer's friend for sponsoring today's video. The next video was the huge succulent unboxing from Mountain Crest Gardens. It was so big, you guys. I just, I did not expect that many plants to come out of those boxes. There was 125 plants in four boxes, beautiful stuff. It's so fun to pull out so many plants I had never even handled before. I'd never seen those varieties. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that was a fun, fun day. And they did a giveaway and we weren't a part of like how things were. You can still enter. Can actually. you still enter? Yeah, I think that they're going to do the giveaway. All the details were on their website, mm -hmm. but um, we'll throw a link again down below. But yeah, you can still enter. I think that they're drawing like on March 1st. Oh. So you still have like a couple, couple weeks. Awesome. First question, Kathy said at 102, you showed the tag for a Sempervivum, Sempervivum honig, honigmond, and it shows it's good for negative 20 degrees. Is this reported for all the plants? No, these are absolutely gorgeous. The Semps are usually hardy to zone five, which is negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, each variety will be a little bit different, so you definitely wanna do a little research, uh, but Sempervivums are one of the things we can plant out in our landscape and have it survive. I was happy to get as many as we got because we can plant those out somewhere. I think hmm. that'd be fun, like dedicate an area. Eddie said, this was so much fun. Thanks, Aaron, you made, <laughs> made my day. Oh, with all the comments on the looks of some of those succulents. Does anyone else have trouble growing string of pearls? I love them, but I seem to kill everyone I bring home. What am I doing wrong? Too much water, too little water, but I keep trying. In my experience now, I live in a super dry climate, but I find that they need a little more water than my other succulents. Now that could be a little bit different for everybody, but that's how I have found success with them. Dana said, how tall will the cacti you received grow to be if you plant them in individual containers? Now I have, I would again have to look up every individual variety because I have no idea. Some of them will keep on growing and growing and growing and get, you know, good size. Like I think that, what's that? Some can get quite tall. Yeah, right? like I think there was a something pipe. Um, there was a, some kind of a, it was a blue cactus. And I've seen those like big when we were down in Southern California, mm -hmm. I saw them in big containers. Um, so I think it just depends on the variety I would have to look. Tracy said, that's quite the haul they've sent. Where exactly do you store a hundred extra plants? Right now I'm storing them in one of the trays that belongs to one of these light systems. I happen to have one that was not full of plants. So I took it out and put all the succulents in that on the floor in the Hartley right now. Uh, it just be for ease of watering because I can just fill the, uh, the saucer or the tray up just a little bit and let all the succulents suck it up instead of individually watering every one of them. Uh, but we will probably do some kind of a project. I haven't quite figured it out yet exactly what I want to do. Well, you can do several projects. It seems I like could, with that many. I could. Uh, she said, I guess I saw the video where that person's succulent fountain and they wanted to help you start one. Yeah. It's kind of amazing though. Like you remember Harris the hair? I did a Semper Vivum. Harris and he was very hard to water and I don't know that I actually want to do a project like that again 
It took so many plants to fill up that topiary. So many. Like hundreds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hundreds. So I could start a project like that with this load. That's what is kind of crazy. So we'll figure out something fun. Charles said, what happened to the dress form covered with succulents? I think they eventually took it apart because that one was also hard to water. Um, when it's here, or if I didn't have as many plants, it's kind of like with Harris, you could go and individually water all these plants, like how they should be watered with a little syringe and really, you know, fuss with it. But when you are in a hurry and just can't dedicate the time, it's hard to keep those kinds of things nice. So uh, they lost a few of the succulents, and then I think they ended up just taking a lot of them out and potting them up. It's fun to have, though. They had it for months down there. Sometimes those things, I feel like, are More just displays. inspiration. Yeah. yeah, like, well, like the flower show we just went to. Yeah. You know, like a lot of the things that they do there, it's just for inspiration to get people's juices flowing, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily like, well, this is going to last for five years, mm -hmm. you know? Wendy said, how will you water them? Uh, when and how many times each week or month? It would be great to uh, know how to look after them. Uh, these here where we're at, I do, I check on them once a week and I might water them every other week or so. Cactus once a month, usually. Okay, next video is flower bed cleanup begins. Roses, hydrangea, and perennial cutback. I did not get as much done in that video as I had hoped to. I just kept kind of getting way late. And uh, yeah, it just was one of those days where I was a little bit slower for some reason. But I, am, I think I did address the things that I kind of wanted to, which was how I pruned my roses back, how I was pruning, pruning the hydrangea standard, and then just general perennial cut back. Um, anyway, we got half of the west side done and it looked so much better. Chrissy said, can you go into more detail about arb maintenance? Like what should we be doing to clean out the insides to encourage fuller, health, healthier growth? First of all, I think making sure they have enough water. Well, for us in our climate, again, we have to make sure that they have enough water. They're fairly shallow rooted and so they do need quite a lot, like more than some of your other evergreens. Um, I think cleaning out the insides on occasion. I don't think we've ever done that. No, we did one time. Did uh, we? I remember, yeah, we had a, a girl come and, um, and do some. Did we? Yeah, like years ago. Okay. So it's been several years. So for us, I guess, yeah, every every few years. This you is go probably in... like the second time and they've been in there for six years maybe. Yeah. Uh, so getting in there and kind of cleaning out some of the stuff, it just happens because, you know, the outer growth shrouds the inner growth and it can't... I can't live without light and air movement and that sort of thing. So you end up with the brown leaves in the middle or, or needles. And so you go in and kind of clean all those out. It does make them look a lot better. Um, and then it also provides more air circulation for the whole plant. I think it keeps them healthier. Uh, and then fertilizing with plantone is how we do it. We have some that are fairly unhealthy at the moment though, because our watering was off last year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that we can, I think we'll be able to recuperate them. That was, that was like kind of big time my fault. Why? Um, I mean, well, it just happened last year. I wouldn't say so. In the, it was though, because at the beginning of the season, I was watering every third day, mm -hmm. you know, when you're getting some rain in the spring and yeah. stuff like that. So it was just every third day and occasionally we'd get some sprinklers or whatever sprinkles. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I forgot and we were like into the summer always and they were still only getting water every third day. Oh. And that's, you can maybe get away with every other day if you're Deep giving in. them, you know, enough, but Otherwise, arbs can pretty much take water every day mm -hmm. if you want to, in a climate like ours, when yeah. it's 100 degrees. I foresee a juniper replacement at some point. Yeah, I could see that too. Yeah. That's what I said in the beginning, I think. Really? Yeah. Remember, and you were like, oh, they look so dry, which they do a lot of times. Well, but I, I was like, junipers is the way to go. I don't know. I mean, you could do junipers. You could also, I don't know if that variety was the right choice i think we were trying to find something narrow because we were we were trying to make sure that it didn't take up it wasn't too, too wide space. yeah that's you know? hard to there's not as we wanted much. something you know conical yeah but in hindsight if we would have done like um the western arb what's that um the spring grove yeah but those get massive that well, would have been like the whole west side would be <laughs> Would yeah, be those true. in the end yeah but it would have been a really nice block and it would it's have been true. a nice green color yeah Anyway, we'll see what happens there. Amy's Gardenstead said, when it's time to do maintenance on, when is it time to do maintenance on the fruit trees? I absolutely love cleanup and maintenance videos. It reminds me of chores I might have forgotten, but it's also just relaxing. Um, we did a fruit tree spraying video, which I'm guessing is probably in this lineup. And then I still need to prune, which I'm hoping to do this next week. So we'll capture that for you as well. I don't think I have an enormous amount of pruning to do. There's still small trees. Uh, Danielle said, can you go into more depth about compost you use to top dress? Maybe a close shot of what it looks like. I think when most of us hear mulch, we think wood chips. I know I do. Um, 
which yeah. is kind of like compost. You know, it's well, it's just like it will compost. It, yeah, eventually. But yeah, we just get bulk compost from our local rock yard here, mm -hmm. Ontario Rock and Landscape, and it's been really good. It's been a new source that they've been getting it from. You know, sometimes you, I don't know, like I've had other composts that have not been as good. This mm -hmm. one is good. Um, so we've been really enjoying it. And also as a mulch, it doesn't tend to gray out. A lot of compost, you put it down, it looks nice and dark. And then it, it like starts, sort of bleaches out and mm -hmm. looks gray. This doesn't. It kind of maintains its color. It doesn't stay as like rich looking, but it still looks brown. Yeah. For, which, yeah. Uh, for a long time. Certainly compared to our native soil. Yeah. So we just started doing that because we had kind of have crummy soil anyway. We just thought, you know what? We need to be adding this organic, like good organic matter back into the soil. So instead of using something like mulch, which is going to take a long time and a lot of it's dyed, uh, we were using dyed mulch there because it looked the best, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we just thought we need to get away from this and we need to start using something that's better for our soil and better for our plants. And I mean, in contrast, I don't think that dye is necessarily bad for you. A lot of people will, you know, make it sound like dye is going to, you know, kill you. But, you know, you eat dye in like tons of foods, unless you're like really strict organic, you know, but most people are not. There's the gnat. Yeah, I found you. <laughs> most people aren't. And, you know, a lot of people are consuming dyes all the time. And I don't think that putting, you know, I think there's a lot of dyes that you can put in the soil that aren't. I mean, like, look at like um, Chicago, you know, they like dye the whole river green, right? And like, I don't hear a lot of people being like, you just ruined the whole river. You know, ev all the fish are going to die now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like dyes aren't necessarily unhealthy. You heard it. There's, <laughs> there's Aaron's <laughs> two cents. Anyway, the compost has been working really well. Also land and sea. Yeah, is a I wish that we if use. we could use land and sea bulk, oh, oh, we'd have the best garden in all the land. Yeah. But you kind of have to meter that out because it, it's, it's too expensive. Bagged to, and too expensive. Yeah. yeah. My parent, um, parents, my dad was telling me the price they sell it for. So cheap. Oh, really? Compared to what I've seen you guys say, you've been finding bags for like, what, $28 or was something that like cost, that? Was that his cost or was that actually No, what? it was his retail. I'm oh. like, are you sure you're right on that? It's like in the low teens. Oh, yeah. Bag. I was like, dang. I hope that people in our area know how good of a deal this <laughs> is. <laughs> because it is a good deal. Uh, Victoria said, I cut back my butterfly bush a few weeks ago because my dogs kept running through it and damaging it. Could I cut it back in the fall to avoid dog damage? Yep, you sure can. You may have to cut a little bit more of it off uh, later on in the spring when you can kind of see what buds out and what doesn't, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Just don't cut it back too far. Uh, Seek OGT said, what's the best thing to do with the clippings and waste? I have a heavily wooded yard, so it's good to have a waste pile in the woods or better to get rid of it altogether. We have a waste pile in our native mm -hmm. landscape. It's not woods, but we do have a, a pile that we dump everything in. If something is heavily in, infested with something like spider mites, it gets bagged and tossed. We do not put something like that in a pile. So that's the only thing I would uh, kind of like warn against is anything that's diseased or heavily infested, I wouldn't put it in a pile. Jess said, this might be a silly question, but do you ever water during the winter? Yes, we do. In fact, um, Paul and Bethany watered every single containered thing, <laughs> containerized thing around our property this week. And they did like all the pots we have stashed behind our greenhouse. They did all of that. Um, also we have been watering the boxwoods around the Hartley. We've done that probably two or three times this winter. We should go out and give all the big evergreens a drink probably here, yeah. like in the next week. Yeah. Anything that you planted late in the season, it's a good idea. If you've had long dry spells to give them some water, you just don't want that root ball to dry completely out. Terry said, I have an oak leaf hydrangea. Do you have a video on how to cut the different types? I seem a bit confused, new to this. I'm not sure that we have one specific to oak leaf, but don't, that one blooms on old wood. So you don't want to be cutting that one back. The only time you can do it is really like you can cut off the old blooms right below where that bloom panicle ends, cut that off. Um, and then anything that uh, appears to have died during the winter, you can cut those branches out. But other than that, I would pick a variety that fits your space so you don't have to prune on it. Uh, Kay Billis said, I would love to start cutting back the dead foliage in my flower beds, but I'm nervous about more snow and cold hurting the plants in late February, early March. When is a good time? I'm in zone 6B in Ohio. I do it when I have time. We're a zone 6 um, and we've been cleaning out and we'll probably get s some more cold weather. Things are acclimated at this point. I mean, if you've had a serious warm up and things are starting to bud, 
I probably would hey, hold off and wait um, because that could do some damage. But if things are still dormant, I think you're good to go at any point in that zone. Roland said, how do you get such nice, strong, thick stems on your hydrangea? I've had hydrangeas like uh, Wim's Red and Vanilla Fraser for years, and they refuse to make nice branches like that. They get full sun from morning to late afternoon, and I'm in zone 7B. Could I be wa the watering be an issue? The blooms do tend to crisp up. I don't think it's the watering. I think it's the pruning. To have nice, sturdy branches, you do need to prune your hydrangeas. Your I just said not to prune hydrangeas, so this is confusing, but um, if you have the Wim's Red, is that a macrophylla and the vanilla phrase? I don't, it depends on what kind you have, I guess. If you have an arborescence or a paniculated type hydrangea, you want to be cutting those back by at least a third um, every single year because that will maintain a really strong, sturdy network of branches down below. On your macrophyllas, serratas, oak leaf hydrangeas, those are the types you wanna kinda of leave alone and let them do their thing. And typically they form a pretty good branch if you have a super weak one, you might prune it just to, and sacrifice blooms just in order to get it to like thicken up, you know? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of macrophyllus and serratus out there now that will bloom on old and new wood. Hollytown. Fertilize. Yeah, that's true. Give them some good food. That'll help too. I don't know why my mind didn't go to that. Also, 7B sounds fairly warm for a hydrangea. I know there's some that can go up, you know, like but... Like eight though, right? Well, but like, do they need more of a um well, let me look up this cold period to to kind of get strong the whims red is a panicle it's a zone three through eight. Oh yeah should so that one you should be pruning when it's dormant you can go out right now and you can prune them um and i would prune a third of it out okay next video was new plant load and spring window display down at the garden center that video took three days <laughs> to create because it took us three days to get those window things done, the window vegetables done. And they are very like simple and you know looking in the end, but we had to draw them out and then cut them and then paint them on one side and then paint them on the next side. And I was only down there for just like a couple hours or a few hours each time I went down. Um, so when I showed Aaron a picture of my mom, Monica and I holding up three vegetables, he's like, it took you three days to do <laughs> <laughs> but then we did make 16 of them or so. I thought you only made three. When yeah. <laughs> you're holding up the three, I was like, I've seen you work before. You're usually pretty quick. <laughs> uh, it was really fun though. And we did receive that new plant load in the, the meantime. So I helped put that out and that was really fun. Rebecca said, which of the plants can you plant out now or do you keep them in until later? I'd love to plant ranunculus now. They are my favorite. Do they do good in landscape situations? Uh, ranunculus, I would wait. If you are getting temperatures below 28, they can rot really easily. In fact, I probably wouldn't put them out until it's a little bit warmer. I still have mine that we've forced there in the greenhouse and I'm going to keep them in there until a little bit later. In fact, everything that I took from that load, it's all still in the greenhouse. You could hear, I don't know, I did see an 18 degree night coming on the forecast and I don't know if that's gonna, you know, by the time we get to it, if it's gonna get that cold, but it could. So a lot of the stuff I will keep in there until it looks like it's gonna be right around freezing consistently. And then if we get a really cold night, you can go put harvest cloth on them. And you know, some people aren't willing to, or don't want to go out and have to think about doing that. So they wait till it's good and warm enough to, to plant things out. It's probably a smart way to do it. But typically I'll do a few planters outside and just, I keep a little piece of harvest cloth like wadded up behind the pot and I'll just go out at night and just pop that on there and then go take it off in the morning. There are a lot of things though, like your pansies especially, pansies and any uh, pre-done bulbs, those are really cold tolerant and they can handle a lot. DJ said, what is the large vine growing along the wall on the side of the building at the beginning of the video? I'm not sure I want to say. <laughs> it's Virginia creeper. It's not invasive here. So it's something we actually sell and it's a beautiful vine <laughs> <laughs> and it offers beautiful color in the fall and beautiful berries. Um, so yeah, you know, there's certain states where things are invasive, certain areas and certain areas where they are not, and it is not invasive here. So it's not even close to invasive. No, no. It's like planting a, it's like planting a little bit more of a vigorous clematis for us. We have very few things that are invasive here. Like we've got some weeds that are invasive. Um, I guess they would call those weeds too, probably. Yeah. But we've got like puncture vine. Blue and, dune grass. Yeah. Some That's really invasive. dry dryland grasses that are invasive. But otherwise, yeah, it's not... everything just dies here. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to move here? Yeah. Lisa said, are those blue prim uh, primrose that blue in person? What type were those? It was pretty darn close. It shows pretty close, the color. I was using my phone when I filmed that. 
uh, part, and that usually captures color pretty true. Darren said, would someone be so kind as to spell out the name of the ornamental grass that was in Laura's load? Acorus, A-C-O-R-U-S, Ogon, O-G-O-N. That's the variety name. Uh, Vanessa said, thank you so much, Laura, for sharing this. Love, love, love all the colors. Can't wait for spring to arrive here in upstate New York. Where does your mom purchase those flowers from? Are they sold commercially online? I want those primrose. I don't know where that load came from. I can't remember. It's a wholesale grower in our area, though, that do it's just for our local, like, our local-ish area, I think. Lynn and Shelley said, veggies with faces, what will Aaron have to say? <laughs> After all, we know his feelings on trees with faces. Leave them at the garden center. <laughs> you don't like the googly eyes on the vegetables? No, it's great at the garden center. It's, it's funny. I love it. Yeah. Next video is spraying fruit trees and potting up the cacti that came in our mountain crest garden load. Um, so we started with the fruit trees out in the orchard and I showed you the two different sprays I was using, the horticultural um, oil I was using as a dormant spray to help envelop and smother insect eggs mostly. It does help with other things like some powdery mildew, which we don't deal a lot with here in our area. But then we also use a copper fungicide mixed in with the horticultural oil and what that does is helps with uh, blights. It helps with leaf curl. That's the main reason why we use it is for leaf curl on plums and peaches in particular. Uh, but it's something that we do at least once every dormant season. Uh, you can do it up to three times once in late fall. Usually that means November for us after all the leaves have fallen. And then again on a nice day in January. And then the last one uh, usually right around this time, end of February, beginning of March. The orchard growers around here say if you hit that last spray, you'll probably be good. If you miss the other two, you know, it's good if you can do all three, but if you miss the other two, you should still be okay as long as you hit that last one. Victoria said, where do you get the disposable cups with the measurements on them? On Amazon, maybe we can toss a link below. Yeah. Yeah, you get them in like a sleeve, kind of like solo cups, and they are very handy. While it's nice to have one cup that you can just rinse out, it's too easy to cross contaminate and it's better for everybody just to use one of those little pre-measure cups and then toss it when you're done. That way it just won't happen. There's already enough nervousness for me about accidentally using the wrong sprayer. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have that stress with the measuring device. Bonnie said, does it matter if you prune fruits before or after spraying? Not that I've ever heard. I think just whenever you have a chance. I chose to spray that day because it was nice. And you can't always count on it not being windy here because we typically have real windy springs and summers. Um, so I just, any opportunity I can get out there on a nice sunny day when it's still, that's when I spray. June said, can you still spray with these if your trees are in a flower bed with roses? Thanks for your help. Yes, I think you're just totally fine. Uh, so definitely though, I mean, it depends on the time of the year. As a dormant spray, yes. You, the thing is, is that when you're using either one of those sprays, depending on the time of year you're using it and why you're using it, the mixing ratio will be different and yeah, and what you're spraying it on. So that's why I say like right now you could probably do the exact mix that I did and spray on dormant stuff and you're just fine. Uh, but if you're spraying it later for different reasons, check the label. Samantha said, I have uh, questions. Can you spray a nine bark with that horticultural spray? Mine have been plagued with aphids every year. Great spot for the cacti out of reach of little hands to get poked. I, I didn't even think about that. I put hmm. the cactus lined up on the windowsill right behind that three tier plant stand from gardeners and you can't, the kids can't reach those. Mm -hmm. That was not even intentional. And I'm glad I put them there. Huh. Boom. Yeah. Uh, hyacinth look amazing. How does it smell in the Hartley? Oh, <laughs> fragrant. I can smell those hyacinths like 20 feet away from the Hartley. Like as I'm approaching, I'm yeah. like, oh dang, here we go. Probably won't do that. I get used to it in like five-ish minutes. I think I get used to it in less than that. Really? Yeah. It hits you like a ton of bricks and then like 30 like seconds kind of, later, you kind of forget. Yeah. Oh, and can you spray the nine bark with that horticultural spray? Again, check the label and the reasons why you're spraying it, but yes. Wendy said, do you spray your fruit trees while they are growing fruit? If not, how do you keep insects from eating them? I did not spray them last year. Typically, after you get done with your dormant spray, you're not spraying them again until after like they're blooming and after a certain amount of the blooms have dropped, then you start a regimen of a fruit tree spray like an in-season fruit tree spray every two weeks for a certain amount of time. I know for um, like cherries and um, I can't remember exactly when, but cherries you don't spray as long as you do other things. Uh, apples you spray a lot longer. So I didn't spray any of our trees last year and our apples did have worms. 
Uh, so that's something I'm going to be doing this year. I don't think anything else is afflicted by anything insect wise. So if I could, I'm going to try just doing the apples this year, see if we can get by with not spraying the other ones because the fruit was perfect on them. Anyway, I think that that is it for this week's recap video. It's been a really full week. It's been a very full week. Yeah, and we were filming this on Saturday. We normally do it on a Thursday. Yeah, we were so. going to skip the recap this week, but we decided to forge ahead and it just worked out schedule wise to do it. So anyway, hope you guys are having a really great week. Thank you for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.